Good morning, Central. Happy to be here with you this morning. Before we get started in our book, uh, our study on the book of Ecclesiastes, I uh, just want to let you know that uh, we made the decision uh, earlier today to uh, cancel our outdoor service that was supposed to take place tomorrow at the parking lot of the church, which is a bummer, but looking at the weather forecast, uh, looks like there's about 50-50 chance of rain. And with all of the equipment and things that we'll have to bring out, that's probably not a good gamble to take. And it's going to be really cold, I saw. So uh, all, everything is moved online just like it was before. But it is starting at 1030. That's an hour later than we normally do our services. We kind of pushed it back so that the temperature would warm up. But we're going to keep everything at 1030 just for this week. So head over to uh, the Facebook page, basically where you're seeing uh, this video. And you can watch the service uh, streamed live uh, from inside the church building. Um, you can also look at it at uh, watch the service on YouTube later in the afternoon. It'll take us a little while to uh, get that serv the service uploaded to YouTube. But on Facebook, everything starts at 1030 in the morning. And I'm looking forward to being with you online. So we are in Ecclesiastes chapter 6. We're going to be about halfway done with the book um, uh, after we finish this chapter. This chapter has a tough illustration that Solomon uses. I get what he's saying, but it's maybe a little hard, uh, especially for some of us to listen to. Um, I don't want to minimize it or say that he's wrong or anything, but I, it does make me think, yikes, that's a harsh illustration for the point that he's trying to make. Uh, let's dive in. We're going to read Ecclesiastes Chapter 6, you can follow along with me if you'd like. So here's the words of Solomon, and he says, I have seen another evil under the sun, and it weighs heavily on mankind. God gives some people wealth, possessions, and honor, so that they lack nothing their hearts desire. But God does not grant them the ability to enjoy them, and strangers enjoy them instead. This is meaningless, a grievous evil. And before I continue, I, this... A little bit, I can sense, I, I wonder if Solomon is talking about himself. Can you just imagine um, a great Gatsby kind of character, a person like King Solomon who has incredible wealth but watches uh, everyone else enjoy the fruits of that wealth uh, rather than him who sees, seems kind of bored by it all, if that makes sense? Let me keep going. A man may have a hundred children and live many years, yet no matter how long he lives, if he cannot enjoy his prosperity and does not receive proper burial, I say that, it's a, that a stillborn child is better off than he. This is kind of the hard illustration I'm talking about. It comes without meaning. It departs in darkness, and in darkness its name is shrouded. Though it never saw the sun or knew anything, it has more rest than does that man, even if he lives a thousand years twice over but fails to enjoy his prosperity. Do not all go to the same place? Yes, they do. Everyone's toil is for their mouth, yet their appetite is never satisfied. What advantage have the wise over fools? What do the poor gain by knowing how to conduct themselves before others? Better what the eye sees than the roving of the appetite. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Whatever exists has already been named, and what humanity is has been known. No one can contend with someone who is stronger. The more the, more the words, the less the meaning, and how does that profit anyone? For who knows what is good for a person in life during the few and meaningless days they pass through like a shadow? Who can tell them what will happen under the sun after they are gone. I would argue uh, that the answer to Solomon's questions is God. He is the one that is able to infuse our lives uh, with meaning and purpose. He is the one that is able to take us past just a chasing after the wind, the, the, the line that Solomon uses so often. He is the one that is able to infuse our prosperity with purpose. He is able to give everything like that meaningless. And without him, I do feel like a lot of things are a chasing after the wind. They are meaningless. So church, whatever God has given you, I'm going to pray today that all of us are able to use those things, use the prosperity that God has given us um, for his purposes, For uh, use those gifts uh, in ways that are going to change eternity. Because that's what I think 
uh, keeps life from being a meaningless chasing after the wind. Let's pray. Father, uh, this is a sad chapter. It kind of it just strikes me as the writings of someone who has has been given everything but is still unsatisfied, is still unhappy. Father, may we never be like that. May we be, one, may we be able to enjoy the things that you give us. May we be able to be glad for the prosperity that we have. But like um, like I prayed yesterday, may we also be able to use that prosperity, to use those good gifts uh, for to bless other people and to expand your kingdom. I pray all this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Hope you guys have a good Saturday. Wish we could have been together tomorrow at the outdoor service, but I'm looking forward to being with you online. Have a good day.